Welcome to the All About PT Podcast. The All About PT Podcast is brought to you by OrthoCore Physical Therapy. If you are in the Rhode Island area, in North Kingstown or Westerly, and you need physical therapy, they are your go-to spot. If you're thinking about physical therapy, they are offering free injury screens or free fitness screens if you mention the podcast. So if you're somebody who is thinking about dipping your toe in the water but maybe not quite ready... Just mention the podcast. We'll be happy to get you in. This episode number three is the discussion with myself. So I get to have a split personality and talk about the golf podcast uh, that was the last episode. So wrote an article about golf, about common injuries that I see, and this is just uh, elaborating on those thoughts and just doing more than I did in the blog post and also in the last read aloud. So I hope you enjoy episode number three of the All About PT podcast. It's the All About PT Podcast. Here's your host, award-winning physical therapist and fitness guru, Ian Manning. And boom, we are live again. What is up, everybody? Welcome to the All About PT Podcast, episode numero trace. To my non-Spanish-speaking friends out there, that is number three. And I cannot believe that I have made it this far. Um, so what are we going to do for episode number three? We're going to do exactly what I told you I was going to do. And we're going to discuss the blog that I talked about in episode number two. So, um, again, just kind of recapping what I'm going to do with, with this podcast. Uh, we write some, what I think really great blogs. Um, and so I like to bring that content to you in any way that you can consume it. Um, so for those of you who drive in the car a lot or people just like listen to podcasts, I think this is a great way to consume content and learn. Um, so the last episode, if you didn't catch it, was a blog that I wrote about, um, kind of overuse injuries, not kind of, it was about overuse injuries in golf. And what I did is I just went through and read the blog, uh, aloud, uh, like it was a beautiful bedtime story, uh, something I have a lot of experience with. Um, and so what I want to do on this one is just talk more so about kind of my thoughts behind the blog, why I wrote it, why it's important, and just expound more on the uh, concepts inside of it. So, uh, in general, you know, golf is an overuse injury sport. So, uh, anything that's repetitive is going to give you overuse. And especially this year, um, with Corona and COVID, um, rounds are up. I think the statistic is like 50% or something like that. It's crazy. Um, so, you know, people are working from home. Uh, quote unquote, and staying productive. And so as a result, they have more free time and golf is really the only thing that never really closed. Uh, You know, there were obviously restrictions and stuff like that, but it was uh, something that people could do pretty regularly. Uh, So especially at a time when we were all going a little crazy, not knowing what to do, it was nice to have that stability of a sport that a lot of us love to, to participate in and play. And yes, golf is a sport. So don't even roll your eyes if you just did. Um, So The overuse part of it is certainly more of an aspect this year just because people are playing more. So, you know, you think about a golf swing and for most amateurs, you're taking a swing probably 50 times around to hit a golf ball. You know, putting is not going to put that much stress on your body. Although for your back, if you have back pain, it can just because you're in that position. But it's really the torque of the swing that creates um, a lot of the overuse injuries that I see in golf. So, uh when you have those injuries and um, you have more volume, obviously you're going to see a little bit more. And I've seen a lot more this year as far as people having back issues, more significant back, back issues with uh, what's called a radiculopathy or, or pain down the leg. A lot of elbows this year, a lot more elbows than, than usual, uh, and more kind of neck issues. So um, in the blog, the first overuse injury that I talked about was back pain. And, um, you know, in general, when it comes to uh, the way that I approach my golfers. And I always say this and I don't say it to sound cocky. Um, I always like to say that I sound confident, but my wife always says I sound cocky, but, uh, I don't think as a physical therapist, treating pain is difficult. Um, you know, from a simple standpoint, if you stop doing what you're doing, that's causing the pain, rest it, ice, you know, you you can calm down any inflammation. The hard thing is making sure that it doesn't come back. And certainly in the case of golf, the really hard thing is making sure that what the, what the golfer is doing in their swing is uh, changed. So that way, when they go back to the sport, um, yes, again, it is a sport. 
uh, when they go back to the sport, then they uh, don't recreate the injury. So, you know, if you are a therapist who doesn't work specifically with golfers, you're not doing anything to help them correct their swing. It's great for business because they're going to keep coming back. But as far as, you know, the ethics of being a physical therapist, our job is to make sure that somebody gets better and hopefully doesn't wind up back on our table because we've given them the tools that they need to make sure that it doesn't happen again. So in the aspect of golf, you know, if you calm down the inflammation and you calm down uh, the pain and you improve their strength and flexibility, that's all well and good. But if there's something in their golf swing that they're doing mechanics wise to create that issue, that overuse injury, you're going to see them every single year, every single season, if not multiple times a season. So um, that's kind of how I approach it with my golfers. I always want to make sure that they're that we're fixing their injury, but also taking it to the next level, making sure that it doesn't come back. So that's why we always look. Uh, or that's why I always look at a golfer's swing uh, to make sure there's nothing in within that uh, that's repeatable, uh, or sorry, something within that that is repeatable that's creating that injury. So um, when it comes to back pain. A lot of times, two swing faults that I see in back pain uh, is called reverse spine angle, um, which is when you go to the top of the swing and you're leaning back towards the target. Uh, that's the number one reason why golfers get back pain. Uh, the number one area for pain in a golf uh, in a golfer is trail sided back pain. So if you're a right handed golfer, then your right hand, you, the right side of your low back is very frequently irritated in a golf swing. Um, as same, you know, reverse it for my lefties out there. If you're a left-handed golfer and you have left-sided low back pain when you play or after you play, um, that's the number one injury in golf. Uh, so reverse spine angle, look that up. It's when you tilt back toward the target. Uh, and also a combination of early extension and hanging back. That's another thing that will lead to uh, back pain in the golf swing. But um, the, the reason why the back gets irritated in the golf swing is because the back really becomes kind of a dumping ground. Um, of a hip and a thoracic spine uh, mobility and strength issue. So um, when it comes to the body, we're kind of like a layer cake of a segment that moves, uh, followed by a segment that's supposed to be stable, segment that moves, segment that's meant to be stable. So when you look at the lumbar spine, the lumbar spine, which is basically our uh, belly area, the lumbar spine is meant to be really stable. And the thoracic spine above it, our rib cage, and our hip joints below it are meant to be really mobile. In the case of most golfers, more so male than female, we tend to be really tight. So when the thoracic spine and the hips don't rotate the way that they're supposed to, and you're playing a rotational sport, the lumbar spine can compensate for that, and it can give you some motion. But in general, you're asking it to do something that it's not meant to do. Uh, so it's like taking a pickup truck and trying to drive it like a sports car. Yeah, you can hammer the gas. But after a while, you know, you're going to wear out the brakes, you're going to wear out the engine. It's not really built that way. Same thing with your back. It can rotate. Your lumbar spine can rotate. But after a while, over and over with repetitions, it's going to break down and you're going to have an issue. So if you can make sure, number one, that your thoracic spine is rotating the way that it's supposed to, I really like open book exercises. Um, you can always go on to my YouTube channel, Man in Golf PT, uh, which is a great resource for lots of videos uh for exercise, golf-related stuff, uh, pretty much everything is on there that you could possibly need as a golfer. Um, and then from the hips, making sure that your hip flexors are loose, making sure that your hips rotate the way that they can that they need to. I like doing, uh, you know, just a hip flexor quad stretch for that, and a 90-90 hip stretch for that. So first and foremost, make sure that those two areas move well, and then core strengthening is really important. And in the case of the lumbar spine. Really what it comes down to is pelvic control. Um, so your pelvis um, is where your hips attach, and then your lumbar spine attaches to the top side of the pelvis. So uh, in the golf swing, your, your pelvis is like an ellipse. So as it rotates, you need, you need to make sure that it stays within range of where it's meant to be if it tips too far forward. So think of it like a, like a water bucket. Um, if your water bucket is too far forward and the water dumps forward, or it's too far back and the water dumps back, that's going to put excess strain or put your lumbar spine into an area that it can put excess strain on, on the tissue. Um, so making sure that you have really good pelvic control by doing core exercises, you know, planks, all that stuff, planks, bridges, um, dead bugs, uh, cat camels, and then all the, all the different core exercises that you probably know and have done are great, but you have to make sure that you do them correctly. And a big portion of that is making sure that your pelvis is neutral and that you can maintain that neutral spine 
and move through your hips and or move through your arms when you're doing core stuff without losing that stability. That's really the key. So if you're somebody who cranks out, you know, a, a ton of, uh, or you can hold like a three or four minute plank, more likely than not, no offense, you're probably doing it wrong. Um, because nobody should really be able to hold a three minute plank with ease, um, while properly using their muscles. So when it comes to back pain for overuse injuries, number one, number one with all of this with overuse injuries is make sure that you're getting a, a full body screen to see where your strength and flexibility deficits lie. Uh, number two, work with a professional to make sure that you're correcting those deficits. And number three, make sure that you're working with somebody who can really assess your golf swing um, and change it. You know, a lot of us, when we work with a swing professional, a lot of people are, are looking for the quick fix, which I understand, you know, we're all golfers. We all want it to, to improve. We always want to improve fast and we're always keeping an eye on our handicap. But I think in general, the great thing about golf as a sport is it's something that you can really play for the rest of your life as long as you do it right. So what I always, what I always tell my golfers is I want to build a swing that's repeatable, but also a swing that's safe because it doesn't matter how far you hit it or how low you can score if the next day you can't walk. So when I work with my my clients to work on their swing, it's always about making sure the swing is safe first, and then we worry about distance. Then we worry about all that other stuff because it's, again, much like I talked about with therapy, it's not hard to make you swing faster. It's really hard to make you swing faster and not break. Uh, you know, Greg Rose, who is one of the creators, the co-founder of My TPI, has a great analogy. He always says, you know, you would never drive a Ferrari with Pinto brakes. Uh, to those of you who are young enough to not know what a Pinto is, I apologize. It's a really crappy car made by Ford that used to blow up. So you wouldn't drive a top-notch sports car with horrible brakes, meaning you wouldn't speed up if you can't slow down. So the same idea with your golf swing. If you want to swing really fast, you better make sure that you have a really stable core and a really stable body underneath it because eventually you will break and you will end up in my office and I will fix you but I will not let you get back to swinging if we can't correct what's going on. Uh, the other thing that I talked about, the second most likely, second most common overuse injury is, is the elbow. And I, I've seen a huge uptick in those this year. And I think it's, uh, it's directly correlated to the increase in rounds and people playing. So um, golfer's elbow, it has that name for a reason. But if you're a right-handed golfer, the most common area of pain is on the inside portion. So if you put your hands out straight, and your palms up. If you look at your right arm, the inside part of your right elbow or the outside part of your left elbow are the most common areas for pain in golf. Um, again, it's it's not usually a um, blech, a hair in my mouth. That's gross. Anyways, see that's how real this is. I'm not even editing that out. So uh, again, it's not um, it's the repetition. It's not sometimes it's the fact that you over grip in the club. But usually it's the fact that you're casting. Uh, casting is a swing fault when you're coming down and you come down into the golf ball. Our wrists are meant to be uh, flexed. So if your left wrist is um, coming down to the golf ball, it should be bent towards you. And a lot of people will flip through the golf ball and overuse those muscles. And as we flip, not only are we, are we adding more speed and more strain to the muscles, but usually what happens is you flip. And then you hit the ground with the head of the club because that's what we're taught to do. We're taught to impact the ground. But then that impact quickly switches your, your wrist the other direction. And those muscles pull on your elbow joints and uh, create the strain. So part of it, again, calming down the inflammation in the elbow. Um, sometimes it's a shoulder strength deficit. So if your rotator cuff is weak, that can lead to stress in the elbow. Um, but also having the, um, the proper swing mechanics to make sure that you're starting initiating your swing with your lower body, not with your arms. So sometimes like an over the top, uh, move with a cast is the most likely position to create pain in your elbow. So, uh, again, make sure that you're working on your grip strength, making sure that you're working on your wrist mobility. Um, I recently started using one of those gyroscope balls, which I think is actually, I wish I had thought about using it a long time ago, cause it's a great way to really dynamically increase your wrist strength uh to, to those of you who don't know what i'm talking about is those ball it's it's like that um it has a gyroscope in the middle of it and you pull the cord and it zips around and then you rotate your wrist to keep it spinning and use the centrifugal force um so it's pretty cool uh if you're somebody who struggles with elbow pain and wrist pain or just just general hand and uh, wrist weakness that could be something cool that you could pick up 
um, that's simple to work on every single day to strengthen your uh, wrist and elbow. And then just making sure that you have um, good flexibility and then check that shoulder uh, to make sure it's strong enough that you're, you're utilizing your bigger muscles, not your smaller muscles, uh, which will lead to an elbow breakdown. And then the last one is the shoulder. Um, so people, again, if you're not initiating the swing, so let me step back a second when I talk about initiating the swing. So the best golfers in the world, when they get to the top of their backswing, start the swing with their hips, followed by the chest, followed by the arm, followed by the hands. So that's called the kinematic sequence. And all those, um, the best golfers in the world, if you were to look at their kinematic sequence, it looks kind of like a graph. And you could lay over, you know, Tiger Woods, Jim Furyk, Matt Wolf, like all the DJ Johnson, um, e e Dustin Johnson, sorry. Um, all those golfers, although their swings look wildly different, if you look at the kinematic sequence, you wouldn't be able to tell who is who. Uh, so when it comes to creating consistent golf that doesn't hurt, you have to make sure that your hips start the downswing, followed by your shoulders, followed by your arms, followed by your hand. So uh, in the shoulder, if you're not initiating the swing properly, uh, you're more likely to start with your arms and come what's called over the top, which gets the club to come down very steep into the ground. And as you come into the ground and make impact, your lead shoulder, more so than your trail shoulder, that can really stress your rotator cuff. So from a mechanic standpoint, you want to make sure, again, look at your thoracic spine, make sure it's rotating the way that's supposed to. Uh, look at your pelvis, make sure that it's strong as it needs to be, because really a shoulder issue in golf is more, again, um, a sign that something else somewhere, somewhere down the line isn't doing what it's supposed to, and you're increasing your stress on your shoulder. So uh, I would have somebody look at your thoracic spine, make sure the mobility there is proper. Look at your pelvis, make sure your pelvis is strong the way that it's supposed to supposed to be and then again look at the swing mechanics make sure that you're initiating the swing uh, your body's staying on plane you're initiating the swing with your hips and not coming over the top with those arms and leading to excess strain on your shoulder um, so those are the three most common overuse injuries that I see and have certainly seen a lot of it this year um, I hope that gives you some increased insight into the blog post uh, or to the episode number two of the podcast uh, this is kind of what I'm going to do moving forward uh, all of my staff write blog posts. They're really smart people. So uh, it's going to be great to get a couple, um, to get them on the podcast so we can both kind of jive at the same time and, and riff off each other and just talk about the, the thoughts that go into treating patients for whatever injury we're talking about. And just give you, as the listener, a little more insight into what we're thinking when we work with you. Um, and, and also different ways that if you're not one of our patients that you might be able to approach an injury that you have. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, episode number three is in the books. Um, and we look forward to talking with you next time. Thanks for listening, everybody. All about PT podcast. Episode number three in the books. Check it next time.